I recently bought a small hand torch and uh, decided to run a few experiments, such as annealing wire, for example. The uh, little torch uh, does not have its self-igniter, so you have to use a, an open flame like this Zippo lighter, but it is handy. I uh, first tried to do some annealing on some copper wire. The one on the bottom and the top are the same from the same spool. And all I did really is uh, heat this one on the bottom that was crinkled, grab it with a pair of pliers, and pulled on it to, see, as you can see, straighten it very nice and easy. Whereas the untreated one, uh, the unnealed, unannealed, <laughs> took a bit more force to uh, at least get going. And I then ran the same experiment on uh, some steel wire. And uh, as you can see, it heated very quickly with this torch. This is just a, a wire of about uh, 28 gauge, I believe it was. And then after I did that, I also tried to straighten this out with the pliers. A little trouble grabbing it, but once I had it, it still took quite a bit, a little stress, strain to pull it. The uh, untreated one behaved similar. And I kind of expected that, but I just wanted to have a comparison. And so for the heck of it, I did the same thing with some brass. And in no time at all, I actually melted. And as you can see, the bottom is just totally destroyed on this little piece. So that torch in this case was set a little too tight. But I grabbed it, uh, grabbed the untreated one, just to, again to make this little comparison. And again, it took a little bit of stress force. But the uh, untreated one, I mean the treated one, uh, once I got hold of it, well, it was easy to stress straight. So the annealing did make a difference there. I had some bronze wire also and after I treated the bottom one uh, it was just as tough to bend and straighten as the one at the top. So the bronze really was very similar to the steel, it didn't make any difference. But I repeated it one more time just for the for this demonstration with it, that br brass wire and I actually held it down with my fingers took very little heat to the torch and as I grabbed it with the pliers and straightened it you can see that uh, it didn't take anything at all to straighten that wire out so the annealing worked well then decided to use this little torch to repair this coat hanger actually it's a Hand hanger that my wife was going to throw away. I said, now let me just try this uh, little torch of mine to see if I can silver braze this back together again. So I put some flux on the joint and started heating and heating and heating. This little torch just was not meant to do this kind of work. So I, I grabbed my old big torch uh, that I've had for many years, uh, put the, uh, the large uh, fixture on it and started that and of course and here's the spark unit to get the things uh, ignited which I actually use on the small torch as well and you can see that the flame is much bigger, much hotter and therefore it will heat this joint much quicker. I already have some solder uh, silver solder on there, but I added a little bit more, and as you can see, it just heated up in no time at all. It was not screwed. So, the big one is needed for this kind of work. Here's the, fi the finished uh, unit after it cooled off, and I tried to brush off this uh, the, the, uh, the residue, uh, which didn't come off. I had to actually use some uh, steel wool, but it was very strong, and my wife actually. Uh, is using it again to hang my pants in the closet. I ran another experiment of uh, silver soldering and so uh, soldering, regular soldering, two different uh, pieces of material. To the right are two sections of uh, brass, uh, copper, I mean copper wire, and I wanted to solder that to the brass piece and so I uh, used some flux and uh, the regular soldering iron kind of small tip like I've been using for other purposes 
and so that was the first. And then for the second one, I used the uh, silver solder and the torch. And uh, here again, after the flux was on there, and I heated it and uh, with a little piece of uh, solder on the back side that finally started to flow. And that worked pretty well. So let's see how strong they are. Oops. This is the, uh, the regular solder. And then this is the silver soldered or brazed, silver brazed piece. And you can see that was it. Okay, I'll continue this with the uh, copper tubing that you saw in the picture. The uh, material was actually a piece of very flat brass. And here I'm soldering with my little uh, soldering iron this piece of copper pipe, or copper tubing. And uh, as you can see, it really didn't flow very well because I just could not get enough heat in there. But I, it worked. It did. So here now I'm going to do the same with the silver brazing. I put a little uh, dab of the brazing material just to the right of the tube, heating everything with the flux. And I kept heating and heating. And just like with the stiff wire, this little unit just does not put out enough. But the big torch that I showed earlier didn't take any time at all to heat this pipe. Uh, it wasn't very thick. And the, and the brass underneath until the uh, solder, the silver solder, was nicely puddled and flowed that you can see right there now. Okay, and again, let's see how strong they are. So after it was cooled off, I grabbed the uh, soldered one, and that wasn't too bad, but it did break off, as you can see here. Whereas the uh, the silver brazed one just, you know, wouldn't give up. That was a good test, I think. This is something I learned from a lady who makes custom jewelry. What you do is you take the spool and cut it into little pellets, and then you use one of these little pellets either on or on top of the joint you want to make. And in this case, uh, I used some brass and some uh, steel and bronze wire. And as you can see to the right, there are two that I use a regular spool and then a solder pallet underneath. Great way to do it. In fact, this is the way to make a silver sod loop and a hook that is very strong. Okay, I'm going to do this one more time with a piece of brass wire, wrap it around a pin that I mounted in a vise, and then I take that loop and cut off the short end. I then flatten that a little bit, and with these needle nose pliers, make some adjustments so the loop is okay, and then I kind of straight, straighten the, uh, the, the other part. I uh, usually have to do a little bit of adjusting to make sure that the loop is closed properly. I then take a little piece of that pellet, put it on top of the soldering flux, and with the, the torch start heating that. You'll see the little pellet drop away amongst the flux, and after it gets hot enough, the, uh, the joint will form very closely to the eyelet, but you don't want it too close. Then I take and put this in the hemostat and start forming the hook. And I make the first little bend and then wrap it around. Then I make a cut at an angle uh, and the finished hook comes out just fine with this braised loop.